What's up everybody, it's Dan the Bugman here. Today's video is all about pets, and it's also about the pests that try to attack and bite our pets. The main character in today's show is Pretty Girl, and also the Soresto Flea Collar. And I'm here to answer this question, is the Soresto Flea Collar a viable option for keeping pests like fleas, mosquitoes, and ticks off your pets in the summertime? I'm about to use this on my cat. She is an indoor and an outdoor cat. So I'm a pest control professional, and I deal with things like mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas all the time on a weekly basis people contacting us because they are getting these pests on their beloved pets. Dogs and cats are always the main issue when it comes to flea, mosquito, and tick control. And that's what I'm going to be helping you with in today's video. First, I'm going to be telling you exactly why I trust this Soresto flea collar to use on my cats and no this is not a paid promotion there are other brands that you could buy that do the same thing but this is just the one that I use today I'm going to explain why these collars in particular work very very well I'm going to show you exactly when you should be putting these flea collars on your pets in the springtime then I'm going to tell you when you can take them off when it's okay to like take them off in the winter time then I'm going to show you exactly what to do if if your pet happens to get fleas or ticks or mosquitoes on them even with the flea collars which is still possible I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do for each of those pests if they do happen to attack your furry fur babies. I'm so, going to go ahead and put this flea collar on her. I don't think she's going to be too happy about it, but she'll be okay. She'll be much happier since there won't be any ticks or fleas on her. So it's pretty straightforward to use these things. All you do is open them up. Be sure when you put these on, you put them on nice and tight. Last year I was trying to be nice to Pretty Girl and I was like, oh, I won't put it on too tight. And I put it on like fairly loose. And one day she comes limping up to my house and she had like one of her feet somehow stuck inside the collar and she was like hobbling up like help me so be sure to get them like pretty tight there's always a big excess that they give you and you can just cut off the rest it just wrap it around try not to get the microphone cord stuck in there too it's just a little collar she had it on last summer for many months in a row and she never had any ticks or fleas on her so you don't use something like this like, you need to seriously consider other control methods because inevitably in the summertime pests like mosquitoes ticks and fleas will end up getting on your animals you could be lucky and they could not get on there but you don't want to take that risk with your fur babies you want to make sure that they are protected from those pesky pests between mosquitoes ticks and fleas those three pests carry dozens of diseases things like Lyme disease heartworm is transferred through mosquitoes the Zika virus and the West Nile virus and really too many to get into but you don't have to worry about all that I'm going to simply break down exactly what you need to do to keep your pets safe from ticks fleas and mosquitoes wave bye to the camera Thanks for helping, pretty girl. You have a good day. Bye-bye. She's shedding so much in the summertime. Before we get going into the main juicy part of this video, if you guys hate mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas just as much as I do, go ahead and smash that like button so I know we're all on the same page. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get in. So the first thing we are going to talk about is why these types of flea collars do work very well. I had to go buy this yesterday. It's not cheap. It was like a hundred dollars almost, but there are other brands you can buy that are probably a little cheaper. This is just the name brand. So the way these collars work, there is actually an insecticide built in to the material in the collar. It says right here, it lasts eight months. Now that's a very, very long time. It kind of has a picture of how it works, but basically the collar is literally built in with the insecticides in it. So it's actually plastic mixed with insecticides. And as the collar breaks down, it slowly releases these little chemicals that will kill off any insect that gets on them. Putting them around the neck, that's like the most common area things like ticks and fleas tend to try to get. If they can come in contact with that insecticide, that's gonna mean those insects will be dead shortly after. But what about the insects that like are on the legs or like the bellies and never make their way up to the neck? Well, that's one of the other ingenious designs on this specific flea collar. If you look closely on here, active ingredient, those are the chemical compounds that are actually poisoning and killing the insects. There are two active ingredients. The first one is flumethrin. That is just a general kill on contact insecticide. The second active ingredient, imidacloprid, that is actually a transferable insecticide. So that means that whenever these fleas and ticks get some on their skin, they're not going to die immediately after. It's going to take them a few days to weeks to actually die from this insecticide. But while they are carrying this insecticide around on them, they will actually transfer this insecticide to other fur on the animal and inevitably transfer the insecticide to the other ticks and fleas that are on your pet at the same time. So when I saw this active ingredient as a pest control professional on this Soresto collar, I was like, oh, that's exactly why this stuff works so well. It's a transfer insecticide. That's actually the same active ingredient that my pest control company uses to kill major insects like termites and ants. When you think about termites and ants, those are colony insects and they've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of individual 
termites, and ants within a colony. And if this chemical will kill a ant colony, then it's going to have no problem killing just a dozen fleas or a couple of ticks. And like anything, it's not gonna be a 100% guarantee that your pet is not going to get fleas or ticks on them. If they have an active infestation of ticks or fleas on them, I will actually recommend to you to buying another product. What I would do is buy a defensive flea and tick collar like this one and also getting a liquid application that usually goes on the shoulder blades of the dog or cat. And with the liquid and the dry flea collar, those two should be enough to eliminate the ticks and fleas. So I'm actually going to give you some more tips at the end of this video about how to properly address a flea or tick or mosquito infestation around your house or that your pet has come in contact with. So stick around to the end. So now I'm going to tell you exactly when you should put on this flea collar and when you should take it off. So it's quite simple in my opinion. You just need to put the collar on right before it starts to get warm enough for these insects to start coming out and you can take it off whenever it gets cold enough for them to start dying off. When it's about 60 degrees outside, that's when these insects really start emerging and their populations will slowly increase throughout the summer. When the temperatures drop into like like the 30s when things start freezing overnight that's when you can be really sure that a lot of these insects are going to start dying off for the winter so if you put the flea collar on at the beginning of april it'll have april may june july august september october and that's seven months of coverage promises eight months of protection so that really is perfect timing to just buy one collar per season so as i mentioned earlier unfortunately like almost everything in this world these collars are not 100 percent guarantee that your pets are not going to get a mosquito bite or a flea on them or a tick on them but there are some extremely helpful things you can do for your pets and in your yard and around your house that can actually help reduce the chances of your pets getting fleas, ticks, or mosquitoes. So I'm going to quickly go over a couple of preventative things that you can do as a pet owner to help reduce the chances of your pets getting these pests on them. For fleas, the number one thing you need to think about when preventing fleas is that fleas are parasites. Fleas cannot survive more than like 30 days without a host. If you think about how would my pet even get fleas in the first place? That's a question that a lot of people ask us. If you can keep the area where your pets leave completely free of other animals, then you're going to significantly decrease the chances of them getting fleas. So if you take your dog to hang out at the dog park, very strong chance that they're going to get fleas from there. A couple helpful tips to prevent ticks from getting on your furry friends. Ticks are also parasites, but unlike fleas, Ticks have a very long lifespan and can go many weeks without eating. Ticks can actually go up to like a year or two without eating, which is pretty crazy to think about. The thing you need to understand about ticks is they're very opportunistic and they use certain environments to attach themselves to animals that they will feed on. So the main thing I always tell customers when they're trying to understand how they can prevent ticks. So the things that ticks like the most are tall, bushy shrubs and also shade. So the two things you need to do is really just keep your yard cut very low and always keep the bushes trimmed up nicely so they're not overhanging. What the ticks do is they actually hang out on these tall blades of grass or these little shrubs, sit there for months on end, hanging their hands out, just almost blindly just waiting for something to come by. And when another animal brushes by, they latch onto them and will crawl on them and start to feed. So if you can eliminate those areas that ticks like to hang out in, then you will drastically reduce the chances of getting ticks. And finally, mosquito guys, mosquitoes transfer the most diseases out of any of those other two pests that I just mentioned. Two of the best ways to reduce mosquito populations in your yard is to eliminate any breeding sites. Mosquitoes like breeding in little stagnant pools of water. That could be anything from like an old tire to a, a pot for your plants, or even like a pond in your backyard. The mosquitoes lay eggs in these little puddles of water. These eggs then hatch into larvae, which are these little squiggly worms that you're seeing on the screen. Those little wiggly worms end up turning into mosquitoes. And when those mosquitoes hatch out, they become adult mosquitoes that will actually attack your pets and your cell. And the adult mosquitoes are the ones that cause all the diseases. So if you can eliminate those areas around your house, then you're definitely going to reduce the population of mosquitoes around your yard. And secondly, actually applying an insecticide to the grass and the bushes is really going to help reducing the adult mosquito population. And that's a service that almost all pest control companies offer. As you can see here, this is how my company applies the pesticides to the yard. We use a backpack fogger and this service works really well. It can reduce the adult mosquito population by 80 to 90%. So I hope those tips make sense for you guys. It really, really helps just to understand the biology of how these insects reproduce and what they're actually looking for and how they end up getting on your pet. And using something like this flea collar is a great first step in making sure your fur babies do not get these pesky nuisance, really just terrible, terrible insects 
on them. Fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. I mean, those just suck, guys. They're just out to just ruin your day. Guys, my comment section is always filled with tons and tons of questions, and I love the questions, guys. Just please just shoot me a comment, and I will literally answer every single comment. Should I deal with this stuff every day? And that's the reason I made this channel, is to help. So if you have questions, just ask me, guys. So I really hope this all made sense, and thank you guys so much for watching.